Hi, welcome to the Art of Semi-Fiction. I'm Jane Daly. And I'm Robin Miller. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about craft. 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 It's uh, something that I like to call set. S-E-T. I, I appreciate you enunciating that clearly because this is a family show. Set. And we are Christian writers. S-E-T-T. Okay. What, what so, earth is that? Well, let's first talk about one of the first things that we learn as writers is that we need to include all five senses. Yep. What are our five senses? Can you name them? Touch, sight, smell, hearing, taste. Ooh, she's good because, you know, I, I don't think I can name all five of them. <laughs> oh, I can because I wrote it. <laughs> so we need, when we're writing in order, even if we're writing nonfiction. Yeah. Because most of the time we think, well, of course, you're going to include stuff about the setting and your, you know, the smell of the grass and the fresh trees and hearing the sound of the birds and what did my food taste like? You more think of that in fiction. Yeah. But in nonfiction, you still have to include those senses if you want your nonfiction to be more than just a boring treatise yeah. of true. Of this is this is my life and it was sucky you know yeah you need you need to include yeah yeah. you need you need riches okay so i believe that every scene that you write should contain four things and those are the four things from set Ah. first is senses as we just talked about how do we include all five senses and you may not be able to include all five at the same time especially if you're doing an outdoor scene you're certainly not going to be talking about what something tasted like (laughs) yeah well unless you're picking berries Yes, good if point. Picking berries outside, you would feel the the uh, brambles of the wild blackberry bush. Yeah, you would taste the tartness of the berry, smell the fragrant flowers, and hear the birds or the water rushing. Yeah, so your scene should contain some element of your senses. Got it. Okay, I like that. All right, that's number one. Two emotion. So that's the E. I like that. If your scene has no emotion, your scene is flat. Can you think of any books that you've started to read where there is just nothing that catches you? There's nothing you can relate to. I thought of them, but I put them out of my mind. I <laughs> because mean, they were so painful. Yeah, and and you can do that. You can. It's it's not just having to write about sadness or anger. You can imbue those emotional traits when you're describing something, describing an inanimate object or a mm-hmm. scene. So you can still have emotion just pouring out of every word without actually just dis- discussing or saying she was feeling sad. I felt this. sad. Yeah. Yes. I felt yeah. sad. How you do that is through your character's actions yeah. and through their words, through dialogue. Uh, yeah. We all know, you know, show don't tell. So I'm not going to say, um, she was super happy. How would I show that? Yeah. Jumping up and down her. She felt like her, she was going to jump out of her skin. She was so excited or yeah. she, she had a smile that just lit up and all of those yeah. things that, that show us emotions, whether it's happy, yeah. sad, euphoric, a book that I found find really helpful is the emotion thesaurus. Oh yes. You have one of those? I do have one. And I, I regularly look at that. I got I got all the thesauruses in that oh, series. Oh, there's, there's more. So, yeah, very helpful, very interesting. What other ones are there? I can't remember the name of them now. I'm going to look. <laughs> you, you keep talking. I'm going to keep look. talking. Do you want me to go get mine and you can look at it? Um, so, what is handy? So, if you're, if let's just say in your book, you're talking, you're you're using dialogue instead of um, instead of telling me that she's sad or happy or whatever you're showing by her what we call beats. So if she says to her husband, you will never believe what happened today. If she is smiling, that's, that's the emotion that she's, she's saying mm-hmm. it was happy. It was a good thing. Or, you know, she's agitated. So I use the emotion source. Cause it'll say, if you're feeling anxious, 
So you look up anxiety and it'll yeah. tell you um, someone who's anxious will they'll rub their their forehead, they'll they'll rub their hands together, they'll sweat, they'll feel hot. Yeah. It's they're so so what are the others that you there, there's some there's there's a ton. There's the negative trait thesaurus, a positive trait thesaurus, the emotional wound thesaurus, Ooh. the rural setting thesaurus, the urban setting, and there's more. There's ones that I don't have and I, I can't find them, but there's a ton. But but one of the, do you remember the um we were at a teaching at a writers retreat in Lake Tahoe a couple of years ago and I did a lead writing a guided writing exercise and I showed a picture of a house and mm -hmm. said describe it as if and it was kind of a dilapidated mm -hmm. old house so it looked a little run down and I said describe it so you're not doing character you're not doing any of that but I but. I said, write it or describe it as if it was the, you had the best childhood that could possibly have happened in that house. And then 15, 20 minutes later said, okay, now describe that house as if you could not wait to leave those doors. And it was interesting. What people pulled out of that were colors and, and think, instead of the boards being um, d deteriorating and cracked and paint peeling, they were worn and, loved and and the house smelled like baking cookies yes or pie. instead of the house was musty and smelled like exactly socks. so when you're talking about your emotion if you, you you can do it in all the ways that you were talking about and emotional the source is so helpful in in that but it's also in how you describe even the inanimate objects or the environment you can pull out the the emotional kind of resonance so if, mm -hmm. for your for your person who was happy there might be yellow sun streaming in, there might be flowers that were blooming and robust. Mm -hmm. There might be the smell of an apple pie, you know, other things that make you feel happy. Yeah. So or it could be pouring down rain and the rain hammering yeah. on the windows and the thunder and the lightning would be the emotion of, you know, fear and it's scary and yeah. it's dark. Yeah. So um, absolutely. So use, use emotion as much as possible, not with telling us, I'm sad. I'm happy. Yeah, but with the fact, don't do that. Yeah, with, no, that is a no big no no. no. Use uh, dialogue beats and use descriptions. You know, is is the is the bedspread chenille? Well, if it's chenille, is it stained? Is it crisp? Yeah. It, are the corners pulled real tight, or is it mu messy like someone yeah. just climbed out of bed? Yeah, and this gives you a lot of depth into your scene that that people don't. They'll be able to to see it. Yes. And have an emotional resonance with it. You won't have to say yeah. the bed was messy because she was upset and didn't get her bed made. You mm. know. All right. Moving on. So the next uh, part of set, S-E-T-T, -T, is tension. If there's no mm. tension in your scene, it's going to be flat. Is that why you looked at me when I talked about the fact that I don't like to see any movies or any TV shows with tension in them? With kind of a weird look in your no, eye? No, because I could totally relate. I don't like <laughs> Okay, I thought you were looking at me like, but you see my writing. I can write tense. Well, and can so can tense. I, but I don't like to watch tension yeah. because I get too nervous. Yeah. I can write it and I can, as we talk about tension, raising the stakes for your, for your uh, main yeah. character. And I don't mind doing that. I don't mind placing him or her in those situations. <laughs> in peril. Yeah, in peril. But, but please note. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. You know? But I love reading it. I won't read scary stuff. Like I don't read Stephen King yeah. because he frightens me to death. But I just read an excellent page turner with this uh, group of, of um, guys who are on a black black ops mission and it was mm. secret and the government wasn't supposed to know about it. And they were going into the, the jungle to rescue a missionary. And I was like, you know. What was it? What, what, do you remember the name of the book? Nighthawk. Nighthawk. I'm pretty sure. It was by Ronnie Kendig, which I remember the author, oddly enough, but I'm pretty sure it was called Nighthawk or Nightshade. 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 Mm. It was the first of a series. Do, do you know, I think that I think that is part of why reading is so awesome, because you have control over it. So you can, if you get too emotionally involved, you can set it down. You can set it down. You can take a breather. You can go get a cup of tea. But when you're watching something you're not in control of the level of tension and, and wherever your threshold is. So I think that that's why I can absolutely, I, I can read things that are very tense, mm -hmm. but, and if I, if they don't have some tension, you're right. It's, it's so flat. flat. Yeah. I mean, 
even if you're reading chick lit, which is very light and fluffy, there's always tension because you've got that constant push and pull between yeah. the main character girl and the main character boy and why they shouldn't be together or if they are together, yeah. what's going to pull them apart. Otherwise you've got a, a, a silly nothing. You've got, yeah. you've got, you've got marshmallow fluff with no yeah. cookie. <laughs> and we cannot have marshmallow fluff with, with no, no cookie. cookie. Obviously. It, yes. So you've got to ratchet up the tension in, in each and every scene for your book to have any kind of um, lasting effect. Yeah. And people are going to put it down. I, I have started, I read a lot. So I've started books where there's a lot of backstory. There's no real, it doesn't start me with any, with any, yeah. I, I, with anything that grabs me and I'll put it down. And that's why um, and constant increasing the stakes yeah. for your main character. Yeah. So, Very important. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. We've got to do a podcast on increasing stakes because that might be for our listeners who are kind of down the road of writing. They'll know what that means. Mm -hmm. And for other people they are like stakes meaning S T E A K S yes. or increasing. Are the we going to barbecue here? <laughs> Exactly. Gonna, that helps you as a writer. writer. Yes. yes. So that's that's actually a really important topic we need to look at. Well, and, and usually when you go to a writer's conference, there will be at least one workshop on increasing the stakes or increasing yeah, the tension. Something, yeah. Because if you if you don't, your your writing is just boring. Yeah. I mean, why are you even writing? Yeah. Because your your main character has to go, even your secondary characters have to go through an emotional journey. Yeah. And as we go through our lives. We know that if everything stayed flat and the yeah. same and we never went through anything, it would be boring. And yeah. life is anything but boring. Exactly. It's it's like a, uh, they call it a character arc. So you've got, it, like it's a smooth thing, but in a book it's more like a jagged line yeah. where you're just constantly increasing that tension until there's that moment of, of resolution. And then it's the, yeah. I can yeah. never pronounce the word, but it's denamo or donamu or... <laughs> I don't know what spell it, but I can't know what N O M U N T. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna smile and nod at that one. But but it's a word, it's a word. I just can't pronounce it. It's where it's like, everything has the ending. Yeah, the epiphany and the resolution is what I call it. But you know, you can use big words with you little French I can words. Spell epiphany. Well, well, I feel, <laughs> it's not the Putnam County spelling bee, my friend. Um but but it, it is the same. I, it is the same thing. It is the, having the epiphany and the, and the resolution. And I I think that when you are writing something without any tension in it, you're really writing what amounts to kind of almost a biography. Or a, even if it's not a real, if it's fiction, you're still saying they got up, they ate their their cereal, <laughs> they put on their favorite pair of jeans, they went to work, they came home, and there's nothing at stake, and there's nothing. It's just a series of plot. Mm -hmm. and, and as we've talked about before, you were just talking about the emotional journey. Every book is has two components, plot, which is just what happens, mm -hmm. and the emotional journey, which has to have some tension right. and some resolution. And if you take out the whole emotional bit, then it really becomes a, and then on Tuesday, they play bridge with mm -hmm. Bob and Mary. Well, and even in nonfiction, there is an element of tension, because you, you're writing about things that happened. Yeah. Or things that you think should happen. Yeah. When when I was writing the caregiving season, I had a lot of tension between my mom and me because yeah. not that she meant to, but my mom was very good at pushing buttons. And so I, I think a lot of moms are very good at pu <laughs> pushing buttons. There is. I, on the other hand, as a mother, I don't. Oh, push I, buttons. I, I never pushed buttons ever. But we digress. Yes, but so there's that. There was that tension between my mom and me, and how did I? How did I? not only show that, uh, but how, mm. how was it, was it ever resolved? And there was the tension between my, my brothers and me with, well, yeah. I expect them to come help and they're saying, no, um, that's not my job. You're the daughter, mm. you do it. Mm. So even in nonfiction, there's an element of yeah. creating tension. Otherwise you're going to have just the diary. My mom did this and exactly. then I did that. And then this is how we fixed it. Well, most, most nonfiction books, whether they're something more, uh, with a narrative arc, like um, personal narrative, like memoir, mm -hmm. or you're even writing about something like launching your adult children, you know, who have 
maybe are failing to launch a little bit, you're still creating some sort of tension and, and emotional because you want to address a felt need in that straight nonfiction. You want to say, here's a problem. Mm-hmm. Here's what happens if the problem isn't addressed, yeah. which is your tension. Uh-huh. And let me show you how, you know, some suggestions, some ways to possibly address it. So it's in all kinds of writing. There has Absolutely. to be something in it that compels you to read. Otherwise it's just a blow by blow. Yeah. Play by play. Play by play. Nobody wants to read no that. No play by plays. Okay, so the final T, we've gone through S for senses, E for emotion, T for tension, and the second T is for twist. Twist. What unusual detail can you add to just add a little bit of a twist to a scene? Mm, yeah. I was at a writer's conference last year, actually Oregon Christian Writers, yes. and Donald Moss you're not familiar with Donald Moss, he has written, uh, creating, uh, writing the breakout novel and he's, he's an agent and he's just fabulous. And he, he talked a lot about just putting something in there that putting something in your scene that just is just a little different, just a little twist. And it, so what I did is in, in my opening chapters of, the book, the, the novel that I'm currently writing, I have that the main character finds the ear of a stuffed elephant underneath the refrigerator, sticking out under the refrigerator as she's talking on the phone. And it, it immediately, um, she's thinking about her daughter who's, mm. who died. And so even though she's on the phone talking with the social worker, there's this thing that, what's that doing there? That was, that shouldn't be there underneath the refrigerator. Oh my gosh, it's it's Pinky's ear. Yeah. So just something that not only creates a, a twist, but also a little bit adds a little bit of tension. Yes. One of the things that you just told us, um, in, we're we're in an advanced writing group together as well, critique group, and one of the things that you just said about the same novel was you had in your mind this one character, what he was all about. Oh yeah. And what you just knew him to a T. And he was not a nice person and very emotionally against. And then he, he did something that was so unexpected to even you as the writer. <laughs> and that twist, that, that twist. emotional twist. And I think that that, I mean, those little unusual, those unusual bits that you're talking about, like seeing an elephant, you know, a bit of a stuffed elephant's ear, the, those are unusual kind of details that are the twist, Mm -hmm. but there can be something larger Mm -hmm. like this. And when you, I mean, it was so sweet to look at your face when you're like, I had no idea you was going to do that. And And I started to cry actually while I was writing the book, that that scene, I started to cry because I couldn't believe that he did what he did. And I'm not going to tell you because you have to read the book. You have to read the book. If it it gets published. When when it gets published. published. But, but I think that that's, that's an exciting thing about twists. They can be very little. They can be monumental. But all of them, if we just, I mean, we've all read the book. We know the butler did it. You know, <laughs> we, 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 we read it. We know what's going to happen. They're going to fall in love. They're going to, you know, the cancer is going to be cured. Whatever's going to happen. We know it. We can see it coming because the writer just puts markers all mm-hmm. along the way. A good, engaging book will have little surprises, not not overwhelming surprises, but enough so that we are kept being compelled through mm-hmm. the, the story um, so that we don't know how it's going to come out. And that is what compels us and engages us with writing. Yeah, it's those, so, it's those twists that we add. So my encouragement would be to examine your word, work, WIP, work in progress. Yes. All those acronyms. And see if your scenes have set. I love that. Senses, emotion, tension, and twist. I love that. All right. All right. Well, this has been the Art of Semi-Fiction, where we explore every corner of the written word. I am Robin Miller. And I'm Jane Daly. Thank you for listening. And please don't forget to subscribe and like us. Like us. Thank you. Thank you.